Open the door! <laughs> oh, no! Well, Nancy, things are not looking good. What the heck happened? This case started out so well. I mean, what could be better than waking up in Venice, Italy? be the American Margarita mentioned. I'm Colin Baxter. I'm Nancy Drew. Where are you from? Oxford, England. At least, that's where I was born. I live here now and intend to do so for a very long while. Although I say that with no small amount of guilt. Why do you feel guilty? People like me and Helena are the reason true Venetians are slowly going extinct. We foreigners come to Venice, fall in love with her, and wind up staying. High demand for food and housing results in high prices, which in many cases means the people who were born here have to leave because they can no longer afford to live here. If I could be granted one wish, it would be to have been born here. That way I would feel entitled to live here, and I would know how to speak Italian. You don't speak Italian? Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian, I am a mosaicist. Right now I'm restoring this 14th century mosaic, which means, without getting overly technical, I'm cleaning the tesserae that remain in place, repairing those that have been damaged, and replacing those that are missing with new ones custom crafted to match. Is Margarita paying you to do this? She is indeed. As little as possible, of course. But, just between you and me, I do this for free. You know, I have some slides of various tesserae. Not only are they enormously informative, but they're also quite beautiful. Would you like to see them? Sure. Marvelous. Here we go. Mmm, what a yummy shade of yellow. Sometimes red is simply breathtaking. I used to hate orange until I saw this, Tessera. I adore this shade of crimson. Magnificent shade of blue. Mmm, what a yummy shade of yellow. Outstanding color. I should probably get going. Very well. I thought I had at long last found a kindred spirit. Someone who shared my passion for beauty, for art. But you apparently are like everyone else. Interested only in what something is worth instead of what it offers the soul. No, no, please. I'd stay, but I really do need to be somewhere. Believe me, I think what you're doing is fascinating, and you obviously really know your stuff. In fact, that figurine in front of you, I've been dying to ask you about it. It's exquisite. What, this statuette? Yes, it is exquisite. It's an example of late Etruscan bronze work, no doubt cast some 2200 years ago. I'm not sure how Margarita came to own it, but she's very fortunate. It's almost impossible to find bronzetti of this quality outside a museum. You see, after they conquered the Etruscans, the ancient Romans melted down thousands upon thousands of statues like this just so they could make coins. Interesting. Shoot, I wish I had time to hear more. No, 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 no. You go on. We can talk more later. Oh, a parcel was just delivered for you. It's by the door. Thank you. Oh, oh shoot. I'm sorry. Here, I'll get those. You must be my newly arrived roommate. I'm Helena Berg. I'm Nancy Drew. Sorry for all the commotion when I came in last night. My plane got in three hours late. No need to worry about waking me up. I can sleep through almost anything. Well, I'm sure you have things to do and places to go, so I won't keep you. Oh, by the way, there's a parcel for you in the entryway. Ciao!
like I'm going to have to pick this lock somehow. <gasps> That's my pager. Antonio Fongo is in his office. Time to go to work. Buongiorno. And again, welcome to Carnas Costa. I see you finally decided to get up. I was starting to think you were still in bed. If it's a daytime and it's sunny, no matter the time of year, this is where you will find me. They say the sun gives you wrinkles and worse. And that may be true, but it also makes you tan. To me, to be tanny is good. Your accommodations, they are to your liking? Oh, yes. The room is wonderful. You do not mind having a roommate? Well, sort of. But at least she doesn't snore. I warned Prudence that you would have to share a room, but she said you had to come to Venezia this week and you had to stay here. And as we both know, what Prudence wants, Prudence gets. Have you gone outside the car yet? No, not yet. Just do not forget to take your key and lock the front door whenever you leave. This is not the Palazzo Grassi, but I do have uh, several valuable pieces of art. And with Il Fantasma, this phantom thief, running around and stealing everything, I prefer not to take any chances. I'll let you get back to your sunbathing. Bella roba. Nancy, what are you doing? Spying on someone? Davvero? Looks interesting. I'd better go somewhere private and report this. Ciao, this is Nancy Drew. Yes, is this Detective Leporace? Si, but please, to you I am just Sophia. I'll remember that, Sophia. You have something to report? I think so. While I was watching Fongo, a pigeon flew to the window outside. Fongo got up from his desk, went over to the window, and took something off the pigeon's leg. Something very small. He removed something from the pigeon's leg. You are positive? Yes, he removed something, kind of studied it, then left the office. Maybe he is using a trained pigeon to communicate with someone. Yes. This could be true, because we know that by phone he talks to almost no one. Here is what we will do. I will deliver to you a tracking device. You will sneak into Fango's office when he is not there and feed it to the pigeon. After that, you can use your PDA to see in what direction it has flown. You want me to feed a tracking device to a pigeon? It will be very, very tiny. But I do not want to leave it at the ATM. If you go there too much, people will get suspicious. So we will leave it for you in the costume store in Campo Santa Maria Famosa. It will be hidden among the things there. You will have to find it. How will I know what it looks like? Very soon I will send a picture of it to your PDA. But you must locate the device quickly. If you do not find it in time, it will destroy itself. If that happens, we will hide another device. Your PDA will show you where we have hidden it. You want me to feed a tracking device that self-destructs to a pigeon? The self-destruct mechanism will automatically deactivate when you pick it up. And do not worry. The device will not hurt the pigeon after it is swallowed. And I'll be able to track it using my PDA. Sounds like this thing is going to come in very handy. It is from the GDIF. Military equipment is good. Well, guess I'm on my way to Campo Santa Maria Formosa. After you have fed the tracking device to the pigeon, you must do two things. You must find out where the pigeon goes when it leaves Fongos, and you must discover what it is carrying. 
Call me when you know these things. You're a good to help us, Nancy. We are very short-handed. Carnivale keeps the police very busy. I'll do my best. Ciao. Hello? Hello, is this Nancy? Miss Rutherford, yes, it's Nancy. How are you? But to be honest, I'm rather peeved. Were you or were you not to call me just as soon as you were settled in there at the car? I'm sorry, I should have called, but I've been very busy. And I've been very worried. I was afraid Margarita had allowed my beloved kindness ghost to fall into such a state of disrepair that it was no longer habitable. Oh, no, no, the car is fine. Oh, that's a relief. So, how goes the case? Captain Brassica said he was going to send you a parcel. Has it arrived? Yes, it sure has. Good. The sooner you get to work, the better. I talked you up quite a bit, you know. Both the GDIF and the local gendarmerie are expecting great things from you. As am I. No one wants this phantom scoundrel captured more than I do. I'm flattered, Miss Rutherford, and I'll do my best. But it's not like I'm a superhero or anything. Like I told you, I just like solving mysteries. Just see that you solve this one in a timely fashion, dear. We leave on a cruise in two weeks, and I shan't be able to enjoy a second of it until I know all those stolen works of art have been recovered. I'll let you get back to whatever it is you're doing. As it happens, I'm writing my memoirs. They shall be called The Principles of Prudence. Unfortunately, this has necessitated my hiring an assistant. You really must stop thinking bad thoughts about Ginger. Yes, you are. Just look how she's shaking. The other day, poor Ginger mistook the shapeless lump of leather my assistant called her purse for a doggy toy and ripped it to shreds. She's still a bit perturbed. Although, believe you me, Ginger did her a massive favor. Anyway, if you ever cannot reach me, it means we are hard at work. The bonne chance! Let's see, what should I wear? Piccioncino, vieni, vieni. Vola, vola. Gotcha. Hello? 
What so kind of message is that? I better call sì, Sofia. Sulla stazione però bisogna andare in taxi. Nancy, you have tracked the pigeon. After it left Fongos, it flew to Campo Santa Margarita. It landed right next to this place called Casa dei Giochi. Casa dei Giochi. You are sure? Yeah. Is something wrong? Casa dei Giochi is a private club owned by Enrico Tazza. The police suspect that he fences stolen goods for big criminals like Leo Macchiano. Fongo is working for the Phantom. Perhaps Tazza is working for him too. Look around the Casa dei Giochi, Nancy. Talk to Tazza if you can. Get on his good side. See how much you can find out without making him suspicious. Was the pigeon carrying a message? Yes, but all it says is hello in English, followed by an exclamation point. Hmm. There is a dot at the bottom of this exclamation point? Yeah? You must find a microscope and examine this dot, Nancy. If Fungo was sending a message to Tatsa, maybe it's hidden there. A microdot, of course. I'll do that. I'll find a microscope and take a look at it. If I do not hear from you, you will hear from me. Mi scusi, dove, dove mangio qualcosa l'economico qui? A casa mia. Eh, Puoi, ma... Può venire quanto vuole. Guarda. Davvero? Sì. Grazie. Another package? And I want you both to know that I am very sorry if that American girl is bothering you. It was not my idea for her to stay here, believe you me. Yikes, they're talking about me. I shouldn't listen. She doesn't bother me. Nor me. In fact, I rather like her. But I'm going to anyway. This is because she spends most of her time on the roof bothering me. She is always up there looking through binoculars. She says she is a spying on someone. A teenage girl spying on someone? That is what she said. Come now, Margarita. She was giving your leg a good tug, that's all. This could be. Anyway, I apologize for the trouble she makes. If she bothers you, you tell me and I will tell her. Oh, she's fine. She's quite fine, actually. If you change your mind, you'll know where to find me. Would it be okay if I used your microscope? I have a very strict policy when it comes to my equipment. No one touches it but me. And now, you. I trust you, Nancy. Please, be my guest. Oh, thank you. Nancy, you have examined the microdot the pigeon was carrying? I sure have. The message, which was written in English, said, Il dottore requests you to change the safe room lock combination to 43556. Il dottore? Yes, which is really interesting, because in his office, Fongo has a poster of Cameria dell'arte masks. He's crossed out all but five of the masks, and among the ones that aren't crossed out are the Brigella mask, the mask the Phantom wears. Right. And the mask for Il Dottore wasn't crossed out either. And it was in the middle, like it was more important than the others. And when I went back to the place where I'm staying, a box of chocolates had just been delivered for someone named Il Dottore, which means it's very possible that Il Dottore is one of the people at the Canos Costa. Perhaps Fango and the Phantom and whoever else they are working with are going by the names of Commedia dell'arte characters. This would make it easier to secretly communicate with each other. And if that's true, perhaps those chocolates are a message of some kind. And if Il Dottore was at the center of that poster you saw, perhaps the person the message was meant for is the ringleader. Just what I was thinking. Here is what we will do. I will have a technician hide tracking devices and objects these people are likely to carry around with them. Then, when we know which of them is Il Dottore, we will activate the appropriate device and be able to follow him. Awesome. Let's see, Helena's always writing, so for her I could plant a bug in her pen maybe. And Margarita is always sunning herself, 
so you could hide a bug for her in a sunglasses case. But for Colin, for Colin, you could bug a mosaic tile. You know, a tessera. He's likely to carry a mosaic tile on his person? If it's from me, he will. <laughs> Long story. This is good information, Nancy. I will have our technician prepare the two bugged objects and the device which she will hide in the pen, then leave them for you in the Banca del Oro ATM. You should give them to each person as soon as you get them. Will do. Keep your fingers crossed. My fingers are always crossed. La strada gento, placida e l'onda, prospero il vento. Venite all'agile, barchetta mia, Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia. Venite alla gile, barchetta mia, Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia. Oddio, sto male, mi sono stato beccato da un piccione. Dov'è un ospedale? What is your name? Oh, so Samantha Quick. Si, 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 un you were early, but no, please, the dummy. Enrico is at the scope, but he's. Hello, Mr. Hello, ah, sono Enrico Tazza. Benvenuta a Venezia. I'm sorry, but if it's all right with you, I'd prefer to speak English. Of course, whatever you wish. What a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting you until after Carnevale. I know, but I just couldn't wait to get started. So, you're not only young and attractive, but enthusiastic as well. Tell me more about yourself, Samantha. I'd rather just get down to business. Because, frankly, telling my life story to someone wearing a mask is just a little too freaky for me. I understand. Besides, having never met you before, I would have no way of knowing if what you tell me is a lie or the truth. I always wear the same costume for Carnevale. Why? Because I'm a very superstitious man. I believe that always doing things a certain way brings good fortune. For instance, I never discuss business with anyone unless and until that person beats me at the game of Scopa. Are you familiar with the game? Yes, but it's been a while since I played. Just to be safe, I will review the rules of the game as we play it here at the Casa dei Giochi. There are four suits in a scopa deck. Coins, cups, swords, and clubs. Each suit has ten cards. Seven, the most valuable card. 
6-5-4-3-2 and Ace. There are also three face cards. Valet, Knight, King. When you are taking tricks during the game, each card is worth what it says. With a Valet worth 8, a Knight 9, and a King 10. However, for scoring at the end of the game, 7s are the most valuable, followed by 6s, Aces, 5s, 4s, 3s, 2s, then all face cards. For scoring, these are called primes. To play the game, three cards are dealt to each player, then four cards are placed face up in the play area. If three kings appear, the cards are redealt. The player who did not deal the cards goes first. When it is your turn, you must play one card and one card only from your hand. Now, you have a two and there is a two in the play area, so you will play your two and take a trick. I discard a valet worth eight. You cannot make a match, so you discard your three. I discard the two. Now, because you have a knight in your hand, which is worth nine, and there is a six and a three in the play area, six plus three equals nine, which means you have a match and you take a trick. I discard my ace, and because we are both out of cards, I deal us both three more cards. Ah, you have a seven in your hand. You also have an ace, which is worth one, a four, and a two in the play area, which add up to seven. But there is also a seven in the play area. So, which do you match with your seven? The three cards that add up to seven, or the seven? The rules say, when presented with such a choice, you must take the take by collecting the single card. And so, you match your seven card with the seven card in the play area, and take a trick. I make a match with the valet and take a trick. You have yet another seven in your hand. Now you match it with the ace, the four, and the two and take a trick. And since you have taken the last card in the play area, you say scopa and get a point. We continue to play by discarding and taking tricks until all 40 cards have been played. At that point, we count the points we have won by taking tricks and getting scopas. The first person to get 11 or more points wins. If no one has 11 or more points, the deck is shuffled, the other person deals, and we play another round. Are you ready to play? You bet. Scopa We've played all our cards. You took the last trick, so you get all the cards left on the table. No points for me. I get one point for having the most tricks. I get one point for having the most coin cards. I get one point for having the seven of coins. Now, let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of primes. I have the most valuable tricks, so I get one point. And lastly, we score the Scopas.
Opa! You took the last trick, so you get all the cards left on the table. You get one point for having the most tricks. You get one point for having the most coin cards. You get one point for having the seven of coins. No points for you. Now, let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of primes. You have the most valuable tricks, so you get one point. And lastly, we score the Scopas. You took the last trick, so you get all the cards left on the table. You get one point for having the most tricks. You get one point for having the most coin cards. You get one point for having the seven of coins. No points for you. Now, let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of primes. You have the most valuable tricks, so you get one point. You took the last trick, so you get all the cards left on the table. You get one point for having the most tricks. You get one point for having the most coin cards. I get one point for having the seven of coins. Now, let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of primes. I have the most valuable tricks, so I get one point. You have won the game. 
And because you beat me, we can finally talk business. I have a client who desires the Sad al Melek Sapphire. Have you heard of it? Of course. The Sad al Melek is said to be the largest and most beautiful star sapphire in all of Europe. As you probably know, its current owner is a man named Vladimir Thanatos, who keeps it at the Palazzo Zateri, guarded by one of the most sophisticated security systems ever devised. Even someone with your youthful energy and talent will find stealing it a challenge. Which is why I suggest you contact Gina as soon as possible. Gina, good idea. The more time you give her, the more details on the system she will be able to give you. There, business is over. Back to pleasure. Do you have time for another game of Scopa? No, I'd better get going. Good luck, Samantha. As soon as you have the sapphire, bring it to me. Z A T T B R B Oh shoot, Fongo's on his way. Here I come. find a thing and they were here for hours they're not even sure how he got in this is highly disturbing nancy i sent you over there to unmask this villain not to be victimized by him believe me miss rutherford after what happened last night i'm more determined than ever to catch this guy well having that trinket torn from your neck seems to have brought out a pluck in you whereas having that figurine stolen from the piano nobile seems to have brought out the greed in margarita when I reminded her that her insurance company would reimburse her for its loss, she was downright giddy. Oh, good heavens, someone called the police! What's wrong? Are you all right? I mean the fashion police, dear. You should see what my assistant decided to wear today. Definitely not a minette originale. <coughs> what in the world is on your head? Oh, please take it off, you're scaring Ginger. Thank heaven she came in the back door. If the neighbors saw, oh, the scandal. 
In a tomfoolery, off with you, Nancy. That rogue has stolen quite enough. I insist you find him forthwith. Toodaloo! Why do you say that? It's not my fault that figurine was stolen. This could be interesting. It most certainly is. You left the door unlocked. I most certainly did not. You were the last one to leave last night. I always lock the door. It's part of my routine. You're just trying to blame someone else so you won't get fired. Oh, since you're not about to blame Nancy. Indeed I am not. You're glad her locket got stolen, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. You're the one who's being ridiculous. Interesting Chinese puzzle box. Where'd you get it? Oops, there goes my pager. microscope isn't working. I can't see anything. It was working fine a minute ago. How could you break it, Nancy? Something so vital to my work, so critical. How could you be so careless? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a burned out bulb. Oh. Well, I'll just have to find you another one. In the meantime, why don't you have a go at the mosaic? Use the tesserae from that bin and create a mosaic that looks just like that photograph. With any luck, by the time you finish that, I'll have found us another bulb.
done it. Good for you. While you were doing that, I replaced the bulb in the microscope, so you're all set. And a five, six, seven, eight. edges though so take that costume home and practice what's your name uh nancy nancy forget it from now on your name's uh punchy punchy larue but next
Come in. Enrico is at the scopa table. You have the sapphire? Nope. You do. Excellent work, Samantha Quick. I will... Excuse me. Pronto? You know the rules, Nico. I cannot tell you what your next target is. You keep a list in that Chinese puzzle box, no? When you shake it, that compartment opens up. Nico, no! How could you have lost it? Never mind. Go to the Capitano and get him to tell you. And when you go after the target, do not wear that costume. You are trying Il Dottori's patience. Okay, ciao. Where were we? Ah, your fee. Unfortunately, that is business, which means we cannot discuss it until you have once again beaten me in a game of Scopa. You have changed your mind about playing Scopa? I really don't want to play cards right now. Then our conversation is over. Margarita, what's she doing there? I'll grab a little shut-eye. I see you have recovered from having that locket ripped from your neck. That is what happens when one leaves a door unlocked after one has been told not to. I didn't leave it unlocked. I'm positive. What do you need from me? I saw you coming out of the Argon building. Do you have an office there? No, but I know someone who does. I wanted him to set up a wireless network here in the car. My friends, they all say it is something I must have. You saw me? That is strange. I did not see you. I was uh, in a shop across the street. I saw you through the window. So when will he set up the system? Never. He said he does not do that kind of work anymore. Which made me very angry because I found this flyer here in the car just last week. Look at it. Why would he print that and give it to people if he had no intention of doing what it says? It even came with a discount coupon. Ah, I do not like it when people waste my time. Where did you find this? Where it belongs. In the waste basket. I was not emptying it, I just saw it from across the room. So it's all right if I keep this? Senza altro. That is all you wanted to ask me? I saw this case and thought you might like it to keep your sunglasses in. You are giving me a gift? You do not have to do this, Nancy, but I, I like gifts. And this one? It is very nice. Grazie. Guess I'll be going. Good, good.
Welcome to the for our safe and secure. Looks like some cards are missing, including the Ray Di Denari. According to the list I found in that puzzle box, the Ray Di Denari is code for the Palazzo Orpello. I'll bet that's the next place they're going to hit, the Palazzo Orpello. Nancy, what has happened? Long story short, I think I know where the Phantom is going to strike next. Where? Tell me. I'm pretty sure he's going to steal something from the Palazzo Orpello. You are pretty sure? I'm really sure, as in almost positive. And I know his name is Nico. That's what Tatsa called him anyway. Nico Petit. He's a thief we are very familiar with. He's not very smart, which is why we did not think he could be the Phantom. But if he is taking orders from someone, that is different. Here is the plan. I will call the GDIF and have them send us some agents to stake out the Palazzo Orpello. You must be there too. I must? I mean, okay, sure. But first, you need to do two things. You must give everyone at the Carnos Costa the objects which will allow us to track them. Already did that. Although I think Colin may have left town with his. We will worry about Colin later. Second, you must brush up on your Italian, so that during the stakeout you can understand what the agents are saying over the radios. I can do that. Good. When you feel you are ready, call me, and we will move forward. You got it. Ciao. Hello, Nancy. All the tracking devices have been planted, and you have brushed up on your Italian? Si. Good. The stakeout will take place at midnight tonight. You and the GBIF agents will allow Nico to enter the Palazzo Opello, then capture him when he tries to get away with whatever he has stolen. And so, I ask you, Nancy, are you sure you are ready to go on the stakeout? I am ready. Then good luck. We will talk again after Nico is captured. Nancy, the four of us agents will be hiding in the courtyard waiting for Nico. We will call over the radio to tell you where we are and pick out from time to time. If you see Nico, let us know where he is and we will try to catch him. But don't give away our hiding places. Behind the statue. Fermati. Non riesco a trovare. 
He's to the left of the white flowers. Nico hasn't admitted anything? He does not admit that he is the Phantom. He does not even admit that he is Nico Petit. The police and the GDAF have been questioning him all night but have gotten nowhere. So we still don't know who Il Dottore is. And we do not know where any of the stolen artwork is. This is not good, Nancy. Now that Nico has been arrested, the theft ring may break up and we may never recover the stolen goods. Prudence is not going to like that. Was he carrying anything that might help us? A wallet? An address book? I am looking at the arrest report. Among the items that were taken from him were a silver trumpet that he had just stolen from the Palazzo Apello, some coins, some matches, a used tissue, a receipt for Papano, I should say propane gas. On the back of this receipt were some numbers, 3447. Well, guess I'll just have to keep snooping around. Let me know if I can help. Ciao. This is the safe and secure store that was mentioned on that fax machine.
Killian. Where have I seen that name before? The address on this crate is the same address that was on that letter Helena dropped. Let me out of here! Hey! Open the door! Nancy, I was starting to be worried about you. It's Helena, Helena Berg. She's Il Dottore. You are sure? Yes, and I think she knows she's been busted. So you have to activate the tracking device I planted on her and find her before she escapes. I will activate her device immediately. But because of Carnevale, there are no officers available to follow her. You will have to do this, Nancy. You want me to track her? After I have activated the tracking device, your PDA will show a picture of what method of transportation she has taken, whether she's traveling on foot, in a gondola, or by Vaporetto. From time to time, it will also announce where she is. Why can't it announce where she is all the time? The transmission of a continuous signal would make the device too easy to detect. So please, Nancy, watch your PDA. It will tell you Helena's method of transportation and her last location. Use this information to figure out where she is headed so you can go to that place and intercept her. But you must move quickly or she will get away. I will send someone to help you as soon as possible. Okay. This prudence, Rutherford. I did not like that she forced you on us. But when you are on a case, you are like a dog with a bone. I like that, Nancy Drew. There. Helena's tracking device is activated. She is all yours. Hurry! La Fenice. A piedi. A piedi. A piedi. A piedi. Santa Maria del Giglio. A piedi. A piedi. Una corretta. A piedi. Un vaporetto. A piedi. A piedi. Rialto. Gotcha! Helena! Don't try to hide from me, Helena. Nancy, what are you doing here? Getting my locket back. What are you? A cop? A government agent? A thief? What? What do you want? I'm just an amateur detective who wants what all decent people want. Justice. I had a feeling you were up to something. Your sudden arrival at Nascosta. Your feigned interest in Venice always asking questions. You've been watching Fango from the Altena all this time, haven't you? And now the little spy wants her locket back. Well, good. Because you're not getting it back. Ever. Ora! Ora! Helena! Stop! She's getting away! Don't be too pleased with yourself, Nancy Drew. It's not over between us. Not by a long shot. True to her word, Helena didn't go quietly. After she was arrested, she insisted that because of me, a silly American teenager, a terrible mistake had been made. She claimed that not only was she innocent, but the locket around her neck was hers. But after I showed the authorities everything I discovered, it became clear that all the thefts attributed to the Phantom of Venice were actually perpetrated by a gang, her gang. It started with Hildegard Killian, a wealthy pork belly heiress in Chicago, who gave Helena a list of the Venetian art objects for which she would happily pay a small fortune should Helena somehow obtain them for her. Inspired by what she had learned while covering the trial of criminal mastermind Leo Macchiano, Helena subtly pumped her sources in the police department for the names of known or suspected criminals who could serve her purposes, which enabled her to put together her very own theft ring 
made up of Antonio Fango, codename Il Capitano. Using everything from trained pigeons to chess notations to chocolates, he made sure everyone in the ring knew what they needed to know by the time they needed to know it. Gina Scaramuccia, a civil engineer familiar with practically every security system in existence, she determined the best way to steal an item and, via Il Capitano, passed this information along to Nico Petit, Brigella, who did the actual stealing. It was his idea to wear the mask and cape while pulling the heists, something of which Helena, il dottore, did not approve. He delivered what he stole to Enrico Tazza, Arlecchino. He hid the items in paper mache carnival costume heads and stashed them away until they could be shipped to Hildegard Killian. But thanks to Sophia and me, they're all on their way to prison. Prudence Rutherford was so delighted that all the stolen objects were recovered undamaged that she's decided to include me in her memoirs which I guess I'm supposed to consider a great honor. Margarita is delighted, too. Everyone thinks that because I was staying at Ca Nascosta, she was somehow instrumental in solving the case. She's suddenly the darling of Venetian high society, which for her is a dream come true. As for Colin, he called me once out of the blue. He had read about the Phantom's capture and had just one question. Did I get my locket back? When I said I had and was wearing it, there was a long silence, then he just hung up. For a while, I felt bad. Then I remembered all those slides. 